This podcast is sponsored by Vicon, the Academy Award-winning developer of motion capture products and services for the life sciences, entertainment, and engineering industries. Vicon provides cutting-edge hardware and software with industry-leading accuracy. Shogun, Vicon's visual effects software developed specifically for the VFX community, captures performances effortlessly in real time and delivers robust, accurate, reliable data. Find out more at www.vicon.com. Hi, my name is Victoria Atkin and you're listening to the Performance Capture Podcast. I am excited. Today I have one of my, I want to say best friends, that is also a hugely talented, amazing person and just phenomenal and you are so lucky to have her guidance and advice and information and her beautiful spirit on this podcast i'm not gonna leave it any longer please introduce yourself what is your name where did you grow up and what is your professional title hello victoria my name is patricia somerset i grew up in the united states in a rural town in upper michigan called lance and my professional title is actor voice artist and singer and a great voice actress and singer and actress you are. So we're talking about performance capture today. Some of us will know that you have done performance capture for video games, but I'm going to let you talk a little bit more about your credits and things like that. But before we get into that, um, I always ask everybody on this performance capture podcast, how would they best describe what performance capture is? It's a huge title and spectrum, but how would you describe it? That is such a great question. I would describe performance capture as a hybrid form of live performance that is intended for specifically giving animators a more pure data so that they can recreate live action in an animated form. And what that means is going into a kind of um, capture suit, which is, of course, you know, uh, a leotard with balls on it that reflect um, and get caught by cameras in a room. And then whatever you do is actually um, sort of mapped by a series of many, many cameras. And then that that data is put in digitally into computers and shot out in some sort of digital code that can then be um, animated at form. It's an interesting question. I will I will try this one more time, actually, because um, I think that's great. It's you can add to it. But I mean, it's a it's a huge question. So. Yeah, keep going. Anything else you want to add to it? All of this information is really useful to everybody listening. I was thinking that um, people ask what the differences are between performance capture and TV and film. And we often talk about uh, theater as being a kind of an actor's medium because you have two live bodies or more. Um, you You have some sort of dialogue between a live action person on stage and some sort of audience. Um, so you'd say, you know, performers medium, perhaps TV and film is more of um, a director and an editor's medium. And I would consider performance capture, in a sense, an animator's medium. Yeah. In that sense, yeah. Mm-hmm. So how did you discover performance capture? How did you get into it? What was your first gig? Who explained what you were doing? <laughs> uh, man, it's actually hard to remember how much I knew about performance capture before I landed my first job, which would have been... Uh, Hope Jensen in Assassin's Creed Rogue. I went in, I'd already done a fair bit of training for theater. I'd done a master's of classical acting. At the same drama school as me. (laughs) Yeah, which is astounding. And then we both ended up in the same uh, series in a way um, at relatively close to the same time, which is just mind blowing. I wish I'd known you at drama school. I I wish Zelda and Evie had been in the corridors actually communicating that would have been fun <laughs> but both being stealth assassins we somehow managed to evade each we other's found pres- each other yeah <laughs> we found each other eventually i can't even remember how we first met anyway i'm sure we'll figure that out carry on sorry <laughs> oh no I'm, I'm trying to think about that too actually oh uh, gosh what was the question <laughs> oh how did i yeah how did i come to performance capture for the first time yeah i auditioned for a video game by this point i'd already been pretty fascinated with with video games and had done several voices and had done some voices for Ubisoft. And I was in Montreal and got called in for an audition that was like a live action audition. So it was it was recorded as if I was doing something for TV film. And I knew that it was a cool game and it, and it was sort of relatively based around some sort of like assassin, you know, very physical, um, stealthy 
character type. That's what I knew, but I, I didn't know what I was getting into. I just gave it a go, landed the part, was absolutely thrilled because I had hoped to get something like that. I think I knew about performance capture by this point, but it was so foreign to me. I'd not done any courses in it. I just had a really strong movement background and had been sort of pushing on my agents like, hey, hey, you know, how, how can I get into this? Uh, so when I landed that, it brought me straight into a full performance capture situation where they were doing voice, face, and full body um, with workshop process and uh, and everything up from there. And I guess that would have been in 2000 and I want to say, what, like 13 or? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. That's really cool because a lot of people that we've talked to didn't really know much about performance capture before they landed a job in it. But you seem to have had some knowledge of this. Or did, did you take some workshops or were you just curious and you knew about it? Maybe in Canada it was more prevalent. Well, I think video games were already on my radar. And the weird thing about it is that when I when I got back from doing a master's of classical acting in, in London, I was very theater centric. And I almost <laughs> changed my career entirely. Uh, I almost became an arts educator and moved up to the Arctic and uh, to work on like suicide prevention. I almost changed it up. And I, I was asking the question a lot about what the most relevant form of acting and storytelling was in the present world. Because I felt so much of what I was experiencing in theater was attempting to bring back forms that were otherwise dead or called dead, mm -hmm. um, that, that were harder to relate to by a, a large mass audience. And I found that really frustrating. But I, I, was, I was asking myself like diligently all the time, um, what is the next thing in the world that I want to do that excites me that I can do with this um, this degree and this um, this craft that I call my, my craft. And I, I wanted to make it meaningful. And weirdly, video games came, came around at the same time and I already had a deep fascination for voice and knew that voice work was something that I was always interested in. It was always a joy to do. Uh, so I guess when the video game opportunities began to come up at that point, I, I just embraced them. I was I knew I really, really wanted to experiment with it. And and I was willing to put in a lot of work to sort of get into that room. That's amazing. And that's the thing that I really love about you is that you're, you are, you seem to be very forward thinking. And that's great that you are already curious about this. I, I love to hear that. And so you made your dreams come true, which is great. So what, what's your favorite thing about motion capture? Hmm. I would say one of my favorite things about motion capture is probably the work environment because I always find when I show up in the morning to go to the so-called office, which is, you know, a, a cute little dressing room, you've got a nice coffee, you run into a bunch of really low-key pleasant people all the time. You get suited up um, by a bunch of, you know, really fun, nice people. You joke around, um, you get measured and, you know, you go through this whole process even before you get to the stage. And they make it so that it's a it's a really nice work day. It generally falls within work hours. It's just very pleasant, everything about it. Um, and so I, more and more, as I, the older that I get, um, TV and film is great, but you you end up with these really long hours, a lot of overtime, a lot of um, a lot of variabilities in in terms of like when you're actually going to perform. And at least with motion capture, I find um, you get a lot of that same sort of payback, but it's 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 really more there's a really nice structure to it that i that i quite like it's a nice hybrid again between voice work and tv film <laughs> yeah you still get the same benefits of playing these great characters but in environments that are just spectacular and then you get ah, to see the yeah. end result animated it's really cool and more and more the key, the people that you get to work with are um they're all you know they're all crossing over from tv film too so you get to work with the same people that you would in like big value productions for for feature films and things like that so oh, yeah. man the, the people you meet oh it's, it's wild we've been yeah. noticing i don't know about you but um that the writing the casting everything is is really just taking another step up i think maybe because they have the money now these companies but they're really investing in the best talent for the job in all areas yeah i mean we're seeing trends now we're even at uh, things like you know national theater school like places that have specifically been like old world craft for a long time they're now on the side offering all the same things like video game writing and video games are you know they're they're in in the forefront now and they're they're coming up so it'll be really interesting to see where it goes in the next 10 years and then where it sits alongside tv and film 
Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about this medium and, and where it could possibly go. And I, I, it was one of the reasons why I wanted to set up this podcast is to unveil and, and kind of share the excitement and the infancy, but the progression that it's made already in the last, you know, decade or so. Um, so yeah. tell us an experience that you enjoyed on the motion capture stage, something specific that was maybe funny or um, that just stands <laughs> out for you. Oh, gosh, there are a lot of those. Um, a lot of moments of humor when you're in a, you know, <laughs> like just a jumpsuit with balls all over you. There's a so, there's so much <laughs> playfulness, like uh, so much joking around and, and camaraderie when everybody has to get into the same ridiculous, you know, T poses. And yeah, you're, you're, it's very childlike in a way. Um, but I'd say one of the, the highlights of one of the last things that I recorded that I can say talk about, which was um, the outbreak scenes from Rainbow Six Siege. We got to work with real military um, experts. So they would come in and they, they're they engaged in like, you know, SWAT exercises. And so they bring you in too, which is which is always something that I've, I've had a deep fascination with the military and it has showed up several times in my career. And it's so interesting that now playing kind of female warriors and like, mil, you know, really strong military chicks <laughs> in video games, it's like a really great fit for me on in my soul <laughs> sometimes. Um, so actually being able to engage in real training for that with people who spent their entire lives doing it. That to me is like one of those like really fluffy, happy moments where you're like, wow, I get to do that. That's so cool. So yeah. unfortunately it's not funny, but it's definitely uh, fascinating. No, the military aspect I love about it. The, um, <laughs> this is a little private story. When I was, uh, when I was a kid, I used to play spies. I used to like to play <laughs> spies. <laughs> that was one of my imaginary games. And I pretend that I was a detective and this little, I wish I had videos of me talking to oh, myself. Oh, I wish I knew and, you then. Uh, I wish I knew I, then. I was a blast then. I, I, I don't know about <laughs> now, but yeah, when I was like seven or eight, I used to have a spy kit and, and do all that. So bringing an assassin to life was just making my little infant self so happy. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But yeah, it is that thing. And, and my father was in the Navy and I had a kind of interest in military and and these characters, and, and they're changing as well, but there's a lot of that in video games, which is really, really fun um, to bring to life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so we talked about your experience and things like that. And uh, I know a lot of people listening are always intrigued. Well, how do I get started in this? I, I don't know about you, but I get asked a lot, well, Victoria, how do I get going? And I, you know, encourage them to take my workshops or I coach people on their auditions and things like that. But you know, we've had different answers to this, but what would your advice be? What would you say if somebody wanted to act in a video game or do performance capture in TV and film, what would you suggest? How would they get started? I'm I'm always of the mind that if you can get education in something, you can get theory and you can build your your craft in a in a realm, then you should do it because to be able to do that at all in the world is such an extraordinary privilege to get education in something. Um, I, I, it, it's so funny because there really is, especially now, there's no clear way in except that the people who are getting called into the rooms are already actors most of the time, unless they are really big in another domain. I guess we are seeing more of that too. You're seeing people like, you know, sports, um, sp sports champions or something getting called in, but you either have to have a really, really special skill and then also direct it towards um, maybe submitting your stuff to a video game company, or you have to have actor training, be a very solid actor, and then go in with those skills and start to audition. So you gotta get acting training as, as far as I'm concerned. That, that is one of the very clear ways in, and without it, you really are putting yourself at some sort of disadvantage in a room when you're asked to now workshop a script, be able to choose a character, be able to have a dialogue with really sophisticated people and get paid for that and help problem solve in a motion capture room because so much of it is having a really dense imagination and an ability to recreate a space, which is stuff that you learn through experience and training and, and to be able to problem solve like um, with them and have the confidence to do that and to offer accurate enough stuff that it will be worthwhile. So yeah, I don't know, acting training to me whether it's through school, whether it's through coaches, definitely workshops are a really like a strong, pure form of getting directly to that. I mean, of course, take all the resources you have around you. And that's also where you get your networking. 
Mm-hmm. Got to train. That's and what and what about um, you know you've done a lot of voiceover as well as TV film and uh, motion capture performance capture work. If a voiceover actor really wants to transition into performance capture, maybe they've just only done voiceover um, mm-hmm. and they're used to being in front of a microphone. Again, you should just suggest going out and getting some formal acting training to get into their bodies a bit more. Totally. I I can see no other way. I mean, what's the point in trying to do performance capture if you don't know how to move your body, how to keep it still and how to do the shapes that they're going to ask you to do? I mean, it's a physical form. So, I mean, there are so many great performance capture workshops. You offer them, other people offer them. Like, I would definitely, if you're in an area where you can do that, um, you yeah, absolutely take workshops for sure. And I would say just to add to that, uh, I, I would say one of the most useful things that I've experienced for, for, for performance capture is actually having already done some sort of physical training, not just acting training, but you know, dance training, something that gets you into your body, martial arts training, some sort of sport, just being generally in shape and knowing what your body's going to do, having uh, spatial awareness is really useful for performance capture. And you can get that from any number of things. Um, mine came through dance, which I would always recommend to anybody because dancing is awesome. Um, but yeah, any, any sort of form where you're using your body at all and learning to do certain shapes and things with it and, and build some stamina is, yeah, is good. Yeah, I always encourage people, I think, looking back at my journey to getting to performance capture, definitely having a huge sports background has lent itself just to, like you say, knowing your body, knowing what you're capable of and and also having this confidence in your body and then mm. aligning it with voice and things like that. Um, yeah, so I don't know about you, but when I've auditioning, talking about advice and things like that, some of my performance capture jobs have come through doing a voiceover auditioning and then it transitioning into performance capture. Has that happened to you too? That has actually, yeah. That happened to me for for Rainbow Six. It started as a um, just... A voice, mostly shouts, barks, and onos, whatever you'd like to call those sessions where you do a lot of high intensity lines. Just give us and, one of those for fun. <laughs> oh, let's see. I'm going to blow out the microphone. Like, I'm going to give you a direction. Facing charge! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, military speak, you know, going in, you know, watch for the blast, that sort of thing. And, uh, and once that. Grenade! Happened, <laughs> How do you know that that's one of my lines? Oh, it's so unique. How did you know? That's it. Oh, hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Victoria. You're probably in that game and you haven't even told me or something. <laughs> I don't know what games I'm in anymore. You anyway, I know it gets to that, doesn't it? It's a good problem to have, listen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, after a year after the game came out, the game suddenly did much better. It, it built itself up. They fixed the glitches and then it started to grow. And then they decided to add performance capture elements and make this whole other campaign. Which game um, was this? This was Rainbow Six Siege. All right. So it started one place. It didn't look like it was doing so hot. And then it became one of Ubisoft's biggest success stories, in fact. Um, so we ended up doing full performance capture afterwards. But I had to audition for that several times to, wow. to go back in and do the full performance capture. It was uh, excruciating. <laughs> yeah, after <laughs> you've already done the voice. I got it only because I'm also an actor, f- you know, for TV, film, and, mm-hmm. and theater. So... Um, just finally talking about advice and things like that, if they wanted to get an agent, do you think it's just the same process? Would you say definitely have a voiceover agent and a on-camera agent if you really want to get into this market? Or do you think you can do it just with a voiceover agent or just with a TV agent? What's your perspective on that? Most of my stuff that I've actually landed for performance capture has come through a TV agent, TV theater and, and film and voice, like they do it all. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's come through because a lot of the stuff is is actually going now through casting directors who also do TV and film. Mm-hmm. So, but but then you also get some through voice agents as well. So I would say part of it's going to be from an agent, and part of it's going to be from the networking and building relationships with casting directors on your own, which also comes from whatever agent that you have, or again whatever classes you take, because so much of it is about networking. Yes, I feel like if I answered one, it would there'd be some way to prove me wrong and say, no, you can do it this way. Because there really is, you, you find your way in where it comes and you just hit your head against the wall a lot on the, on the way in. <laughs> a lot of trial and error, a lot of parties, a lot of talking and reaching out and listening to things like, this is what I also wanted to, you know, put this out there. So 
it's almost like an online networking and educational tool to unveil some of these questions if people don't have the money to take classes right now or they you know don't know where to get started then there's this is now available so patricia how do we find you on social media how do we how do we find you if we want to follow your journey well i am omnipresent no i'm just kidding uh <laughs> so i'm <laughs> I'm on Twitter and Instagram is where I'm, I'm pretty active and I, I do actually a lot of conventions. So I'll be posting about those. Uh, my Twitter handle and my Instagram handle are at Somerset underscore Somerset with two N's like the season and two T's. And uh, patriciasomerset.com is my main website where I also post a lot. And then I'm also, you know, on, on Facebook as well under Patricia Somerset. Amazing. And we have some uh, giveaway swag from our sponsors here. Um, lots of cool things from Vicon, pens and t-shirts and things like that. Will you join us for a competition on social media to uh, give this stuff away on your episode? Of course I will. Amazing. Absolutely. Well, we're going to pick a lucky winner and maybe you can help us pick that for this episode. Um, I just want to thank Vicon uh, as our sponsors and Formosa for letting us record here today. And um, thank you, Patricia Somerset, for being an awesome guest and sharing your amazing, incredible experience and knowledge with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Absolutely my pleasure. This recording was done by Formosa Interactive, a full-service post-production sound company. Among its many divisions, Formosa Group as a whole offers independent and AAA content creators end-to-end -end services, including voiceover, sound supervision, sound design, editorial, mixing and music for gaming, film, broadcast, and other platforms. Visit www.formosagroup.com for more information.